and go on to flourish. And I commend the bill to the House. Thank you. Thank you. The question is that the words proposed to be omitted stand part of the question. And I call the honourable member for Dunkley. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, everyone knows how hard this pandemic has hit small businesses. Um, and there are many people who have worked their entire lives to build up a, a family business who have never taken um, a cent in support payments from the government, who have found themselves not only needing support, and it might be, have been through JobKeeper, it might have been through some of the cash flow measures, um, but also sadly losing their business and needing support in the form of unemployment benefits. We also know that as the government withdraws supports like JobKeeper, more businesses are going to hit the wall. Um, and we are concerned, of course, that at the end of this month, an avalanche of ins insolvencies um, are expected to hit at the end of the regulatory freeze on bankruptcies. Uh, and that is a human story and a human tragedy for so many people who have put their heart and soul into their business. Um, as speakers before me have said, Labor is supportive and I'm supportive of this government working to help small businesses in particular get through this period if they can. And we know that the Treasurer and Assistant Treasurer announced in September what they described as US Chapter 11 style insolvency reforms. Changes to see small businesses at risk of collapse, able to keep trading, work out their problems with a small business restructuring practitioner instead of appointing an administrator. And whilst on paper this may be a good idea, and perhaps ultimately it may work. The great concern, of course, is that this is another example of a photo opportunity without follow through of an announcement that sounds like it might address a really significant problem, but turns out is not based on the hard policy work having been done. And one of the significant concerns for my electorate of Dunkley is that the majority of small businesses aren't eligible for these reforms. These measures are only for incorporated businesses, which means that sole traders and partnerships and family businesses structured in other non-incorporated ways will miss out. Uh, and I can tell this House of the almost avalanche of inquiries into my office early on when the government finally decided to bring in wage subsidies in the form of JobKeeper, of particularly sole traders um, and partnerships who were going to be left out. This is not a small cohort of small businesses in this country. It's a significant cohort of people. And it's a significant cohort of families who need to pay the bills, who need to pay their mortgages, who have debts that have racked up because they've tried to keep their business going, notwithstanding they may have been eligible for JobKeeper, who are likely to miss out in the way that this legislation and this scheme is structured. Um, there's also um, the concern that the changes could just push the insolvency issue further down the supply chain to other small businesses and sole traders. And one of this big concern, particularly in my electorate, is whether or not this will be actually a negative for the tradies, for the tradesmen and women um, who have set up their own businesses um, and who usually work as subcontractors on larger projects, on credit for other businesses, who often work on housing projects and expect to be paid at the end of it, but a cr the crisis has hit, the pandemic has hit, they haven't been paid. Now, will this legislation, will this process mean that they will get their money? Will it mean that sole traders, partnerships and family businesses will be just left out in the coal? Will they be able to get the unpaid invoices paid? Because if they can't, they're the people that are going to continue 
to struggle to pay the bills to keep their families afloat. The plight of subcontractors, particularly in the construction and building industry, um, as I said, is something that is right at the heart of many of the suburbs in my electorate, um, where tradesmen and women work for themselves. Too often the case before the pandemic, we would see a tradie working as a subby to a larger business and ending up out of pocket when that larger business either failed um, or disappeared without paying their bills, when they pocketed the fees for the contract but didn't pass it down to the small businesses below them. Um, this was always a concern before the pandemic, and we're worried that it will be a greater concern now. So I was proud that the Labor Party took to the last election um, a commitment, a tradies guarantee for cascading trusts to make sure that those um, hard-working tradesmen and women who work on large projects as subcontractors can be guaranteed that at the end of the day, no matter what the head contractor does, they will get paid for their work. This was a policy based on a review called the um, Murray Review. Um, and that review, um, amongst a, no a number of things, um, identified that 22 per cent of all insolvency events happened in the construction sector, with 1,500 construction companies entering into external administration in 2016-17 alone. And this is something that the federal government can and should be looking at to help subcontractors. The federal government, through its procurement policy, has the ability um, to put in place stat cascading statutory trust to Order. make sure that— The debate is interrupted. It being 7.30 p.m., I propose the question that the House do now adjourn. And I call the member for Whitlam.